Hello, I'm Emma from Mmm English. So tell me, what type of words are these? They're modal verbs. Now, I've been getting lots of questions about modal verbs from you lately, so I'm going to share some useful tips to help you use them a little more effectively when you're speaking English. Now, these modal verbs are auxiliary verbs, just like be, do and have, because they work together with a main verb. You always have a modal verb with a main verb. And the main verb that follows is always in the bare infinitive form, without to. I could go. You should take. They would like. Paul may borrow. Now, these modal verbs are used in English to express something. They have a purpose. So we need to try and understand that purpose today. Now, they can be used to talk about possibility and probability, to talk about how likely something is. Now, remember, you're always using that modal verb with a main verb. So how likely is it that that action will happen? Are you certain? You're sure? You're confident that will happen? Is it probable? Is it likely to happen? Is there a good chance it will happen? Is it possible or is it unlikely? Now, in all of these situations, you can use a modal verb to explain how certain you are that something will happen, how possible something is. Now, these same modal verbs can also be used to explain ability, so how able you are to do something. They can be used to ask permission, make requests and offer help. In fact, there's quite a few different uses. So I'm going to split this lesson in two. And I'm doing this because I want to take this slowly. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and confused. So let's just take one step at a time. In this lesson, I'll talk about how we use modal verbs to talk about certainty, probability, and possibility. So this is how likely something is to happen, or if it's possible at all. And the next lesson will focus on ability and the other uses. So try not to worry about them right now. But make sure that if you're not a subscriber, you click that red button and subscribe so that you find out when that next lesson is available. Okay, so let's start with probability how likely something is to happen. Now, we use will to talk about the future, when we're confident that something will happen. We believe it. We're certain it's true. The sun will rise tomorrow. Pretty sure that will happen. <laughs> Ashley will be late. Well, she's always late, so I definitely believe that to be true. If you don't take a jumper, you will get cold. It's freezing out there. You'll also hear will used to give reassurance when you want to confirm that something is true. You know when your mum tells you, you will pass the exam, don't worry, even though you're really not sure that's true. She's using will to tell you that she's confident, she believes in you. When you're upset, your friends tell you, it will be okay. They're confident, they believe that everything will be okay. Now, if you're certain that something is not going to happen, use will not or won't. If they walk, they won't arrive in time. It's too far. I'm certain that that won't happen. We also use must when we are confident and sure of something that is happening in the present. And usually we have a reason or an explanation to tell us why something is happening. The baby's crying. He must be hungry. I thought Sarah would be here by now. She must be stuck in traffic. 
They didn't eat any of the meat. They must be vegetarian. Notice how I've given a reason for all of these examples to show why I believe something to be true. And it's quite common when you're using must. It explains that you are quite confident about the statement and you're able to give a reason to explain why you're so sure. To use must to talk about the past, when you're quite sure that something happened, then use must have. After flying for 36 hours, you must have felt exhausted. I thought I'd do better in the exam. I must have been really nervous. Oh, Jack's not here right now. He must have thought that you were meeting him downstairs. Now see how this creates the perfect tense. The main verb following have is in the past participle form. So when talking about the present or the future, must is followed by the bare infinitive form. But when talking about the past, must is followed by have and the past participle verb form. And this pattern is true for many of the modal verbs that we'll talk about today. We use should to say that something is likely. We're not 100% certain, but we believe it to be true. They left an hour ago. They should be here by now. If they take the car, they should arrive by three. To talk about the past, we use should have. It's the same pattern. I didn't realize he was unwell. We should have offered to take him to the doctor. The school knew Sam was gonna be late. They should have called her mother. Now let's talk possibility. So if you're making really general statements about something that is possible, use can. People can be really rude. Be careful because it can be quite dangerous on the streets at night. It can be really hard to find a speaking partner to practice English with. It can take over 12 hours to hike through those mountains. Now, these are all general statements. They're not specific. I'm saying these statements are possible, but I'm not saying exactly what is happening. Now, in this context, could is used as the past tense of can. I remember winters in London. Weeks could go by without ever seeing the sun. So when we're uncertain or unsure about the present and the future, we use the modal verbs could, might, and may. They explain that something is possible, but not certain or guaranteed. If you wait near the door on Lewis Street, you could see the Prime Minister leaving. They might arrive before lunch, but I'm not sure. I may need to borrow your car. Now, might and may here are very similar. There is a very slight difference between the two in that might tells us that the outcome is a little bit less likely. But the truth is that 99% of native English speakers don't even realize this. So you don't need to worry about the difference at all. When used in spoken English, you can use either when talking about possibility. Just consider them to be the same. We may go on holiday in September. We might go on holiday in September. Close enough. <laughs> the meaning of this sentence is so similar, but the second one suggests that it's a little less likely. That's all. We can also use could to explain that we are uncertain or unsure about the future. It could rain this afternoon. It might rain this afternoon. It may rain this afternoon. Now, all of these sentences tell us that it's possible, but not certain. There is a chance that it will happen. Simon could arrive before us. Simon might arrive before us. Simon may arrive before us. Now, these examples all talk about the present 
or the future. And the modal verb is followed by the bare infinitive verb form. But now we'll go into the past, back in time. Then we use these same modal verbs with have, followed by the past participle verb. So suddenly we're using the present perfect tense. They might have finished dinner by now. I'm worried. Something could have happened to Sarah. Okay, so that was talking about possibility. Now let's focus on impossibility when something is not possible, when we know that something is unlikely to happen. The chances of it happening are really, really, really small. When we think that something is impossible, we use the negative forms of can and could. You can't be serious. It's not possible. I don't believe you. Now, this expression is often used after someone says something that you just don't believe. When we think that what is said is very unlikely to be true. When we told them they'd won, they couldn't believe it. He said he was in a band called Meatball. He couldn't have been serious. So when spoken, these negative forms are usually contracted. Can't, couldn't, and couldn't have. Now, you will never see this last one written as a double contraction, but you will hear it spoken. Couldn't have. You will hear people pronounce the full negative form though, especially to add emphasis to make the meaning stronger. That cannot be true. But you can make it even more dramatic by stressing every single word. That cannot be true. Okay, so let's summarize now. If you are certain about something, use will. Or use won't if you are certain that something is impossible. Now, if you're confident about something and you have a reason for believing that, use must or should. If you're talking about something generally that's possible, use can. If you're not certain, but it's possible, use might, may, or could. So remember that there are different meanings for all of these modal verbs, and we're gonna talk about these more in the next lesson. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you feel a little more confident using modal verbs to talk about possibility, and probability. Now remember that the next lesson will talk about how these modal verbs can be used for ability, to ask for permission, to give suggestions, and ask for advice. But for now, keep practicing with these lessons and I will be back again next week with a new lesson for you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.